In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create the raised panel you can see on the screen using a special shaped cutter and the profile toolpath. We're going to start with a simple vector that represents the outline of our raised panel and another vector that represents the profile of the special cutting tool. We will add this tool to the tool database and following that we will create a profile toolpath using that tool to create the desired effect. Okay, so let's start by opening a part with the initial outline vector. So I'm going to file open and we're going to pick the cabinet door vector.crv and now we'll see that on the screen as just a simple external vector representing the outer perimeter of our raised panel. Now at this stage we will need to make an offset of this before we create the profile toolpath, but of course what we need first is to add in the vector that represents our form tool. Okay, so I'm going to come up now and select the import vectors command and pick the rpog.eps file. So as I open that up now, you can see it's clearly displayed in the center of the screen. If we zoom in, we can see that this represents the cross section of the form tool. In this case, it was an imported EPS file, but similarly could have been DXS, DWG, or any other 2D data the software can import. Or alternatively, I may have chosen to actually sketch this myself in the software. However, in many cases, the tool manufacturer will produce a range of form tools with 2D data, and these can be imported into the software. Now, I cannot take this directly into the tool database because I need to edit the profile into the format that it needs. Currently, this is a completely closed profile um, of both left and right hand side of the tools, whereas actually we just need the right hand side of the tool without the top profile. So whilst it's in the selected mode, I'm going to hit N on the keyboard, which will put it into the node editing mode. And we can now see the spans and the points. And I'm going to come up to my top span, hover over it, and then hold my right hand mouse key down and delete the span. So we've removed that span now. Now coming down to the bottom profile, I'm going to select the midpoint there and just right mouse key over that to say cut vector. So now it's in two halves. We're still in node editing mode. So we're just going to hit escape on the keyboard to come out. And now I can pick that left hand side and delete that away. We're now represented with the right hand side profile of the form tool without the top. So that's ideal for us to introduce into the tool database. So with that, I'm just going to select that and now we're going to zoom back out and come across into the toolpath menu and raise the tool database. So with this, we're presented with our set of Imperial tools. We've got M mills, Bornos, V bits, but also we've got the section form tools here. And we've already got a couple of tools that have been added, an OG and a roundover. So with this, I need to add a new tool into this form tool group. So what we need to do is to select the group. So I've picked form tools. I come down to the bottom of the menu and select the add a tool under selected tool slash group. So with that, um, it will give me a default tool. In this case, it's a ball nose. But from the drop down menu now, I'm going to select form tool. Now immediately it's picked out the selected vector that I've got on the screen and show me the full profile and show me the diameter. So I'm happy with that, but uh, I do need to make a change to the name. So with this, I'm just going to go to edit the tools name. And by default, it's given a format of the tool type, i.e. form tool, the diameter, i.e. 3 and 3 eighths, and also the unit inch. But in this case, I want to make a change. So I'm going to switch off this set as default because this is going to be a one off change. And I'm just going to type in here RPOG and just OK that now. And you can see that that's immediately kept the uh, the size and the unit but has added RPOG in front of it. Now with this I'm going to now say well I need to create settings. You can see here that the tool is grayed out because we've not added the uh, the cutting parameters. So I'm going to say create settings now and I'm going to set my pass depth and step over. In this case my pass depth is just going to be say 0.2 but my step over because it's quite a large tool I'm going to set that to 1 and I'm going to keep my spindle speed roughly round about that and my plunge and feed rate roughly at those two. And I'm just going to OK that now. Now this will add that tool into the tool database. So when I OK that, that's been added. If we come back to the tool database, you can see there that it's ready to be selected for a future toolpath. OK, so with that now, we now need to start thinking about how we're going to create the toolpath.
Well, what I need to do is to select the outer vector and actually offset this first inwards before we actually create a toolpath. So I'm just going to come back into the drawing menu now, select the vector and look to offset it inwards. So from the offset menu, we're going to select the uh, inward strategy because we need to make sure that we are creating the form inside of the external vector that we've got on the screen. And in order to create the required shape, that offset distance needs to be 1.375. We're going to select new. So then as soon as it's selected, I can move across to the toolpath menu and then start to configure the profile toolpath to create the sort of raised panel shape. So uh, from the form, we are faced with initially the cutting depth. Now, bearing in mind, we will be starting from the material surface. Our start depth is zero, but our cut depth is not 0.25. We're actually going to be going down to half an inch. Uh, the tool is not the quarter inch end mill, but we're going to pick our new RPOG tool from the form tools. So with that, as I select, you can see that it's configured the number of passes to be three based on the fact that our sort of step down was set to 0.2. Our cut depth is 0.5. Therefore, it will need three passes to complete the full cut depth. We're going to go outside the vectors. So that's fine on the machine vectors section. And then we can just move down now and then select the name and just go straight to calculate now. And we can see the profile on the screen. I'm just going to uh, toggle to sort of a side by side view. And you can see here, based on the fact that the uh, 2D toolpath is being shown as solid in the 2D view, you can see that one of the major issues is the tool is actually passing outside of the sort of job space. And you'll see this when I simulate this now. So I'm going to say preview the tool pass and you can see the tool is actually coming outside of the job. OK, so we can see that there, the tool path, but it is coming. So you need to be aware of how you're clamping it. Or in this case, it uh, may well actually be back formed down onto the machine bed. OK, so that's one issue, which is looking at how the uh, tool is moving around the workpiece, but also the fact that if we have a look at the corners here, this is not the required shape. I was looking for a nice sharp edge there. So what can I do to change the tool path? So I'm just going to double click on that now and come down to sort of three quarters of the way down the menu where it says ramp leads order. And there is a section called corners and you can see there sharp external corners is currently switched off. So if I calculate that now, you'll see that that toolpath has changed. We've lost that rounded edge. So I'm just going to reset the preview now and then preview that again. And you'll see now that we're getting a nice, crisp, sharp edge in our corners. And that's much more to our liking. The next toolpath we need to create is our cutout pass using the external vector. So with this selected now, I'm going to come across and just close out of the preview toolpath form and come up to the profile strategy again. So we need to initially start by addressing our start depths. Now, given the fact we've already cleared a lot of the material at the edge where we're going to be cutting, our start depth doesn't need to be zero. We can start at a depth of 0.5 and just go down by a further 0.25, so all the way down, i.e. 0.75, and come down and select our tool. We don't want to be using our form tool, but just simply our sort of quarter inch end mill will be fine. And I'm just going to select that now and immediately is, is based that on doing two passes given the parameters that we originally specified. So what I'm going to do now is just in order to force this just to do one pass, I'm going to temporarily edit this. So I'm going to come back now and change our pass depth to 0.25. OK, and you can see that's jumped down to just one pass there. Now we're going to be machining outside this vector. OK, so that's correct under which direction we're going. And then I'm going to come down and under corners, I don't need to have sharp external corners switched on. And we're going to change our name to cutout. And just calculate. So we can clearly see that profile there. You can see how the tool is going around the outside of the external vector. And now on the right hand side in the 3D view, I'm going to preview that toolpath. We can see that's cut all the way through. So um, in, in this case, I'm assuming we are using a vacuum bed or this is stuck down. Um, but similarly, I could have used tabs uh, as, as an alternative, uh, which would have obviously made sure the piece doesn't break away.
Now in this case the outside is now available to be removed so I can just double click on that now which will then show just the panel on the screen and now we can go to full 3D view and we can see the beautiful raised panel that we've created and this was done by using the very simple external vector that we offset inwards and also importing the cross-sectional vector of the form tool, making some small uh, vector edits, and then adding that into our tool database as a new tool to then be used with the profile toolpath to create the profile on the inside of the raised panel.